Vincent Luigi Ganti. March 29, 1928, December 19, 2005, also known as The Chin, was a New York Italian American mobster in the American Mafia who was boss of the Genovese crime family from 1981 to 2005. Giganti started out as a professional boxer who fought in 25 matches between 1944 and 1947. He then started working as a mafia enforcer for what was then the Luciano crime family, forerunner of the Genovese family. Giganti was one of five brothers. Three of them, Mario, Pasquale, and Ralph, followed him into the mafia. Only one brother, Louis, stayed out of the crime family instead becoming a priest. Giganti was the shooter in the failed assassination of longtime Luciano boss Frank Costello in 1957. In 1959, he was sentenced to seven years in prison for drug trafficking, and after sharing a prison cell with Costello's rival, Vito Genovese, Giganti became a Cooper regime overseeing his own crew of Genovese soldiers and associates who operated out of Greenwich Village. Giganti quickly rose to power during the 1960s and 1970s. By 1981 he became the family's boss, while Anthony Fat Tony Salerno served as front boss during the first half of the 1980s. He also ordered the failed murder attempt of Gambino crime family boss John Gotti in 1986. With the arrest and conviction of Gotti and various Gambino family members in 1992, Giganti was recognized as the most powerful crime boss in the United States. For about 30 years, Giganti feigned insanity in an effort to throw law enforcement off his trail. Dubbed, The Odd Father and The Enigma in the Bathrobe by the media, Giganti often wandered the streets of Greenwich Village in his bathrobe and slippers, mumbling incoherently to himself. He was indicted on federal racketeering charges in 1990, but was determined to be mentally unfit to stand trial. In 1997, he was tried and convicted of racketeering and conspiracy, and sentenced to 12 years in prison. Facing obstruction of justice charges in 2003, he pleaded guilty and admitted that his supposed insanity was an elaborate effort to avoid prosecution, as he was sentenced to an additional three years in prison. He died while incarcerated at the United States Medical Center for Federal Prisoners on December 19, 2005. Early life and boxing career Giganti was born in New York City to Italian immigrants from Naples, Italy, Salvatore Giganti, a watchmaker, and Yolanda Giganti, a seamstress. He had four brothers, Mario, Pasquale, and Ralph, who followed him into a life of organized crime, and Louis, who became a Roman Catholic priest at St. Athanasius Church in the South Bronx and city councilman. According to his brother Louis, his nickname, The Chin, stemmed from their mother affectionately calling him Chinzino as a boy, derived from the name Vincenzo, the Italian form of Vincent. Giganti graduated from public school three in West Village, Manhattan and later attended Textile High School, but dropped out. Giganti was a professional light heavyweight boxer between 1944 and 1947, who was known as the Chen Giganti. He fought 25 matches and lost four, boxing 117 rounds. His first professional boxing match was against Vic Chambers on July 18, 1944, in Union City, New Jersey, which he lost. He then fought Chambers a second time at the St. Nicholas Arena on October 6, 1944, and defeated him. He defeated him again on June 29, 1945, at Madison Square Garden. His last match was against Jimmy Slade on May 17, 1947, at Ridgewood Grove, Brooklyn, which he lost by technical knockout. He maintained a residence in Old Tappan, New Jersey, with his wife Olympia Grippa, whom he married in 1950, and their five children, Andrew, Salvatore, Yolanda, Roseanne, and Rita. He maintained his second family at a townhouse in the Upper East Side, Manhattan with his longtime mistress and common-law wife, Olympia Esposito and their three children, Vincent, Lucia and Carmela.
He often stayed at his mother's apartment in Greenwich Village. Criminal Career Costello Murder Attempt and Cooper Regime As a teenager, Giganti became the protege of future Genovese crime family patriarch Vito Genovese, who had helped pay for Giganti's mother's surgery. Between the ages of 17 and 25, he was arrested seven times on charges ranging from receiving stolen goods, possession of an unlicensed handgun and for illegal gambling and bookmaking. Most were dismissed or resolved by fines, except for a 60-day jail stay for a gambling conviction. During this time, Giganti listed his occupation as a tailor. In early 1957, Genovese decided to move on Costello. Genovese ordered Giganti to murder Genovese family boss Frank Costello, and on May 2, 1957, Giganti shot and wounded Costello outside his apartment building. Although the wound was superficial, it persuaded Costello to relinquish power to Genovese and retire. Genovese then controlled what is now called the Genovese crime family. A doorman identified Giganti as the gunman, however, in 1958, Costello testified that he was unable to recognize his assailant. Giganti was acquitted on charges of attempted murder. In 1959, Giganti was convicted with Vito Genovese, of heroin trafficking and sentenced to seven years in prison, he was paroled after five years. Not long afterward, he was promoted from soldier to captain, running the Greenwich Village crew, and headquartered at the Triangle Civic Improvement Association. In 1969, Giganti was indicted in New Jersey for conspiracy to bribe the entire five-member Old Tappan police force to alert him to surveillance operations by law enforcement agencies. Though that charge was dropped after Giganti's lawyers presented reports from psychiatrists that he was mentally unfit to stand trial. Since 1969, Giganti had been treated 20 times for psychiatric disorders, and Giganti's primary treating psychiatrist Eugene Diadamo noted that Vincent Giganti has been diagnosed since 1969 as suffering from schizophrenia, paranoid type with period acute exacerbations which result in hospitalization. Giganti's lawyers and relatives have also said that Giganti had been mentally disabled since the late 1960s with a below normal IQ of 69 to 72. Genovese crime boss in 1981 Genovese's successor, Philip Banesquint Lombardo, stepped down as boss due to poor health. With Lombardo's support, Giganti became boss of the Genovese family. Anthony Fatoni Salerno was made front boss of the Genovese family in order to fool law enforcement. Giganti built a vast network of bookmaking and loan sharking rings and from extortions of garbage, shipping, trucking and construction companies seeking labor peace or contracts from carpenters, teamsters and laborers unions, including those at the Javits Center, as well as protection payoffs from merchants at the Fulton Fish Market. Giganti also had influence in the Feast of San Gennaro in Little Italy, operating gambling games, extorting payoffs from vendors, and pocketing thousands of dollars donated to a neighborhood church, until a crackdown in 1995 by New York City officials. Oh, on April 13, 1986, Gambino crime family under boss Frank DeSico was killed when his car was bombed following a visit to Paul Castellano loyalist James Fela. The bombing was carried out by Victor Amuso and Anthony Castle of the Lucchese crime family, under orders of Giganti and Lucchese boss Anthony Corallo, to avenge Castellano and Thomas Bellotti by killing their successors. John Gotti also planned to visit Fela that day, but cancelled and the bomb was detonated after a soldier who rode with the Seco was mistaken for the boss. In January 1987, Salerno was sentenced to 100 years in prison for racketeering, along with top members of the other New York families, as part of the Mafia Commission trial. Salerno had initially been billed as the boss of the Genovese family. However, shortly after the trial, Salerno's longtime right-hand man, Vincent, the fish, Cafaro, turned informant, and told the FBI that Salerno had been a front for the real boss, Giganti. 
Cafaro also revealed that the Genovese family had been keeping up this ruse since 1969. FBI bugs had captured a conversation in which Salerno and Capo Matthew, Matty the Horse, and Yellow were reviewing a list of prospective candidates to be made in another family. Frustrated that the nicknames of the wannabes had not been included, Salerno shrugged and said, I'll leave this up to the boss. Giganti was reclusive, and almost impossible to capture on wiretaps. Speaking softly, is chewing the phone and even at times whistling into the receiver. He almost never left his home unoccupied because he knew FBI agents would sneak in and plant a bug. Genovese members were not allowed to mention Giganti's name in conversations or phone calls. When they had to mention him, members would point to their chins or make the letter C with their fingers. During Giganti's tenure as boss of the Genovese family, after the imprisonment of John Gotti in 1992, Giganti would come to be known as the figurehead capo di tutti capi, the boss of all bosses, despite the position being abolished since 1931 with the murder of Salvatore Maranzano. Trials and Conviction From 1978 to 1990, four of the five crime families of New York, including the Genovese family, Rig bids for 75% of $191 million, or about $142 million, of the window contracts awarded by the New York City Housing Authority. Installation companies were required to make union payoffs between $1 and $2 for each windows installed. In 1988, Giganti had open heart surgery. On May 30, 1990, Giganti was indicted along with other members of four of the New York crime families for conspiring to rig bids and extort payoffs from contractors on multi-million dollar contracts with the New York City Housing Authority to install windows. Giganti attended his arraignment in pajamas and bathrobe, and due to his defense stating that he was mentally and physically impaired, legal battles ensued for seven years over his competence to stand trial. In June 1993, Giganti was under indictment again, charged with sanctioning the murders of six mobsters and conspiring to kill three others, including Gambino boss John Gotti. At sanity hearings in March 1996, Sammy, the Paul Gravano, former underboss of the Gambino crime family, who became a cooperating witness in 1991, and Alphonse, little Al, Diargo, former acting boss of the Lucchese family, testified that Giganti was lucid at top-level mafia meetings and that he had told other gangsters that his eccentric behavior was a pretense. Giganti's lawyers got testimony and reports from psychiatrists that from 1969 to 1995 Giganti had been confined 28 times in hospitals for treatment of hallucinations and that he suffered from dementia rooted in organic brain damage. In August 1996, Senior Judge of the United States District Court for the Eastern District of New York, Eugene Nickerson, ruled that Giganti was mentally competent to stand trial. He pleaded not guilty and had been free for years on $1 million bail. Giganti had another cardiac operation in December 1996. On June 25, 1997, Giganti's trial started Giganti stood trial in a wheelchair. On July 25, 1997, after almost three days of deliberations, the jury convicted Giganti of conspiring in plots to kill other mobsters and of running rackets as head of the Genovese family. Prosecutors stated that the verdict finally established that Giganti was not mentally ill as his lawyers and relatives had long maintained. Oh, and December 18, 1997, Giganti was sentenced to 12 years in prison and fined $1.25 million by Judge Jack B. Weinstein, a lenient sentence due to Giganti's age and frailty, who declared that Giganti had been finally brought to bay in his declining years after decades of vicious criminal tyranny. While in prison, he maintained his role as boss of the Genovese family, while other mobsters were entrusted to run the day-to-day -day activities of the family. Giganti relayed orders to the crime family through his son, Andrew, who would visit him in prison. Oh, and January 23, 2002, Giganti was indicted with several other mobsters, including his son Andrew, 
on obstruction of justice charges due to him causing a seven-year delay in his previous trial by feigning insanity. Several days later, Andrew was released on $2.5 million bail. On April 7, 2003, the day the trial began, prosecutor Roslyn R. Mauskopf had planned to play tapes showing him, fully coherent, careful and intelligent, running crime operations from prison, but when Giganti pleaded guilty to obstruction of justice, Judge I. Leo Glasser sentenced him to an additional three years in prison. Mauskopf stated, The jig is up, Vincent Giganti was a cunning faker, and those of us in law enforcement always knew that this was an act, the act ran for decades, but today it's over. On July 25, 2003, Giganti's son Andrew, was sentenced to two years in prison and fined $2.5 million for racketeering and extortion. Death Giganti died on December 19, 2005, at the Medical Center for Federal Prisoners in Springfield, Missouri. His funeral and burial were held four days later, on December 23, at St. Anthony of Padua Church in Greenwich Village, largely in anonymity. Since Giganti's death, his family continued to live well. According to a 2011 report by Jerry K. Pesci, Giganti's relatives earn nearly $2 million a year as gainful employees of companies on the New Jersey waterfront. In popular culture, Films and television he is portrayed by Nicholas Keyprose in the 1998 made-for-TV film Witness to the Mob. In the 2018 film Gotti, Giganti is portrayed by Sal Randino. The Law and Order episode, Faccia e Faccia, first aired February 28, 1998, featured an aging mafia don claiming mental impairment, inspired by Giganti. He is portrayed by Vincent D'Onofrio in the 2019 TV series Godfather of Harlem. Documentary is the story of the FBI investigation into Giganti was depicted in Season 1, Episode 6 of the FBI Files documentary show, titled, The Crazy Don, which first aired on December 8, 1998. National Geographic aired a six-part documentary series. Inside the American Mob, where Giganti features prominently in Episode 5, The Rise and Fall of Gotti, while actions attributed to him are discussed in Episode 3, New York Philly War. References Further reading K. Pesci, Jerry. The Complete Idiot's Guide to the Mafia. Indianapolis. Alpha Books, 2002. ISBN 0-02-864225-2 Jacobs, James B., Colleen Friel and Robert Raddick. Gotham Unbound. How New York City was liberated from the grip of organized crime. New York, NYU Press, 2001. ISBN 0-8147-4247-5 Moss, Peter. Under Boss. Sammy the Paul Graveno's Story of Life in the Mafia. New York. Harper Collins Publishers, 1997. ISBN 0-06-093096-9. Rob, Selwyn. Five Families. The Rise, Decline, and Resurgence of America's Most Powerful Mafia Empires. New York. St. Martin Press, 2005. ISBN 0-312-30094-8 External links Vincent Giganti Mafia Archive Boxing Record for Vincent Giganti from BoxRecNewYorkTimes.com SSDI.RootsWeb.Ancestry.com